What's up, muscle and strength? This is IFBB Pro Santi Aragon. And some of you guys have already seen me on the Muscle and Strength channel for some time. There has been always very good videos, but not always very good comments. And guess what? I'm gonna get to the bottom of all you trolling trolls out there. And I'm gonna read some of your comments and I'm gonna respond to them. Sticks and stones may break my bones, okay? But you're not gonna make me cry, not today. So I did an episode once on muscle and strength that the segment was what bodybuilders eat for breakfast. I remember this very clearly. So these comments are gonna be nice and fresh to read. So here we go. Man, why is every bodybuilder, uh, bodybuilder on this channel who I've never heard of always have an amazing kitchen and what do these guys do for a living? Well, some bodybuilders don't do anything for a living other than training. I, on the other hand, I, at the time I owned a electronic repair store. I was sponsored by different supplement companies and, and clothing companies, etc. So our way of making money is gonna come from different forms, whether it's training, whether it's promotion. So Miami's very expensive either way, so you have to be very careful on how you spend your money. That's basically the answer. <laughs> Anyone else realize that he doesn't have an actual stove? <laughs> so that stove that I had on my kitchen island, the reason why I used that one is because that was an induction stove, and an induction stove heats up the food much quicker than a traditional glass top stove. Not only that, but I also like to watch television while I was cooking, so positioning it right on the island was easy to watch TV while I was cooking, and it makes cleanup that much faster. But thank you for, for asking. What does off-season mean? I mean, come on. If you're, if you're watching a, if you're watching a channel, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very aggressive. What does off season mean? If you're on a fitness slash bodybuilding channel, I would think that you would know the basic terminology. So off season just means, in my opinion, that you're not currently getting ready for any show, any uh, photo shoots, anything big where you need to be shredded and peeled in shape and you're kind of relaxed on your training and you're a little relaxed on the diet. This video left a salty <laughs> This video left a salty taste in my mouth. Well, you guys already know that I love adding salt, a generous amount of salt to all my meals. Uh, primarily because at the time and most of the time on, I'm, on, I'm on a very low carb diet. It's very difficult to get a pump in the gym when you don't have enough water and you don't have enough sodium in your diet. So maybe I go overboard, maybe I don't, but guess what? My food tastes really damn awesome. Clean, fast food. From what I recall, we went to Taco Bell and we went to the glorious golden arches of McDonald's, my favorite. What kind of shades are those, bro? They looking fresh. That's a nice comment. Most of the shades, including these, I get from, they're called Key. I should get an endorsement by them from this. Key Shades Australia, and I'm terrible at, at keeping my shades from getting lost or broken, so these are affordable, very cool shades, and I have a whole collection of them, so check them out. Why do bodybuilders like Diet Coke? I don't think just Diet Coke is just for bodybuilders, but if I was going to actually have some sort of amount of calories, I would rather eat the calories than drink them. That's why I go with diet instead of a regular Coke. 74 grams of protein in one sitting? Can someone explain that? Ha ha ha. I thought you could only digest 30 to 50 in one sitting. I don't know. I, who, would, who would honestly know how exact on, on the grams of protein that you can actually digest. I eat it, I go to the bathroom. So you know what, in my opinion, I digested it. What would you do without the science? Like, 
if you didn't know the numbers on everything, is there any way to compete without knowing the numbers like that? I don't even, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even get this comment. So if I'm going to try and decipher that whole entire comment, and I'm gonna assume that you mean, how would you eat the food not knowing if you knew the numbers or not? So essentially you could just, you just guess. I mean, if you're gonna be ordering basic food like how we did, chicken, rice, you could eyeball it. I mean, if you get good enough at seeing what one cup of rice every single day looks like, you could kind of guesstimate how, what it looks like on a plate. So that's how I would probably go with the numbers if I didn't actually know the actual numbers. Sounds like the lady at Taco Bell drive-thru wanted to put Santi on her menu. Yeah, muscle and strength. Yeah. Oh, th <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you guys made my day. Oh, I was on her fast food menu. Chest workout, the squeeze method. Hey, it was a good video. Yo, Santi, could you do a hair tutorial, bro? <laughs> well, this is a very easy hairdo to do. You just don't do anything for a very long time and then you steal your girlfriend's uh, uh, rubber band and then you use it. But at that time, I was rocking the douchebag faux hawk, okay? It was very simple. Go to a very good barber, ask for a faux hawk, take a screenshot of what I look like, and then just show it to him and he will do it. Guaranteed, it will get you into fights. Can he beat Conor McGregor in a one-on-one -on -one fight? I mean, like with our hands? I would expect that's what he makes millions and millions of dollars to do. But you know what, I'm also smart, I'm smart enough to not get in a fight with somebody like Conor McGregor. The giveaway, if you want to stay alive, is look at the ears. If you see somebody at a bar with cauliflower ears, you either don't talk to him, stay away from him, or become his very good friend. Those are your only options. You could crack a pencil in your pecs, LMAO. I don't know, maybe. And now we're moving into back day. What's better, a deadlift or a rack pull? That's actually a very good question. In my opinion, for bodybuilding purposes, a rack pull is gonna get you what you want, okay? It's gonna take away the beginning part of what a deadlift would be, which would basically activate your glutes, your hams, your quads, pretty much everything pulling from that halfway point, it eliminates that, and now you're more concentrated on the second part of the movement, which you could concentrate on squeezing your back, your scapulas, your traps, all of those things. That's why I prefer it over a traditional deadlift. Deadlift at last and behind the neck lap pull down. This is dangerous for your delts, but great video. I think that if you exercise proper form and you know what the movement is supposed to feel like and you do it very controlled, it's not dangerous. It's not dangerous at all. I think it becomes dangerous when you don't actually know what you're doing and you're cheating each rep and it's too heavy. Again, I concentrate on very, very strict form and I make sure that I squeeze the parts that I need to squeeze for that particular movement. All right, guys, and we've wrapped up the comment section on our, <laughs> on our previous YouTube videos. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say once the new videos drop, because you better believe that I'm gonna be reading them. So if you like what you see, subscribe, click like, and comment below. Peace. Yeah!